Okay. Now, I know no one is here right now, but we'll let people join in. Um, I am doing a little comparative tasting today. And together, we're going to taste a bunch of stuff that we roasted yesterday, plus a couple new things that I roasted this morning. And compare them and take day two notes on the stuff from last night, because we tasted them last night as well. So we're just going to hang out and taste coffee. So I'm going to go start brewing and actually write down the notes from my first coffee. So what do you want to try first? you want to try the Costa Rica or do you want to try yeah, something last Yeah, no, time? let's try it. Yeah, let's start with Costa Rica. Costa Rica. All right. Oh, I might as well put a little thing up on Instagram. Say hello to Instagram. Do not. I'm just whoa, 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 whoa. story. I'm just putting it. No, no, already, no, it's no, already, took, already took it. I already took it. Oh, that's <laughs> Live on... Um, it's not as good as the YouTube thumbnail. No. First coffee. Taste. I can't type anymore. I'm losing the ability to type on my phone. Okay. Live on YouTube for some coffee tasting. Oh, I should probably get a link, huh? I'm going to get a link to this stream. Pro streamer. Bye. My phone doesn't think we're live. All right. If you're watching the VOD of this, you can just fast forward until I start doing stuff. But just give me a moment while I get a link out to Instagram here. If I can. Okay, my phone doesn't think we're live, so we'll just let it, we'll just post that how it is. Link to YouTube in the bio. And it is right there. Yep. Okay. All right. So Costa Rica coming up first. We'll write down some information here. Costa Rica. Date. Today is the 10th. And this is Los Santos region. And roast profile on this was 14.5, I think. Yeah, 14. Yeah, that sounds right. Um, altitude 17. This is a natural or a honey, honey, honey. 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 Yeah. Yeah. And I don't even know if like that can be heard. Because I don't see the I think these would be moving if that could be heard. All unfortunately. Right. Should be. Is it showing up can you check camera? my yeah since I moved it to public can you check the yeah uh, yeah we're okay. live go ahead and listen to it I want to hear oh, okay. if the audio is working oh Hello, hello, hello. Testing, testing. One, two, three. Checking audio. Can you hear me? Hey, I hear myself. Yeah, we're good. We're good. Like a couple, couple seconds delay. But... All right. We're in. Audio sounds good. A little delay is fine. So we're just tasting some coffee today. We're going to brew. We're probably going to chill for like an hour. Um, just writing in my log book here. We're going to start, we'll turn these around. We're going to start with this Costa Rica I just roasted like an hour ago. Honey process, 1,700 meters, should be a little bit different, should be a little bit fruity, hopefully. Uh, we'll check the notes when we go to taste it and compare. Um, so I'm going to get brewing, 
If you've got any questions, throw them in the comments. I'll be right back. Audio is good. Thanks, Fuzzy Dice. All right. Costa Rica. Oh, it was a 14.3%, so not too dark at all. Just roasted actually about maybe two hours ago. Now, the last one we tried, that was 15.5? Uh, this is new. Costa Rica is new. Oh, Costa Rica, yeah. So the okay. Ethiopia is the one you're thinking of. Yep. We'll do that later. So I'm going to try and do 25 gram brews on V60 today. There we go. Brain doesn't do math. Calculator. 16 times 25 is 400 grams of water. Analyze the grounds, why don't we? Okay, Costa Rica honey process. Uh, just grind it on the Ode uh, Gen 1 on the 5 setting, which is where I pretty much keep it locked in for pour overs, um, V60 especially. Kalita, I'll bring it down to anywhere between 4 and 5. Kalita tends to pull out a little more sweetness, and I'll complement that with a slightly finer grind, but it smells good. Doesn't smell super roasty. Okay. And this was roasted just today. Yeah, about two hours ago. Okay. So. Yeah. So, of course, as with basically any tasting goes, you typically are not ever going to taste the best version of that coffee on day one. Um, but I always like to, as a roaster, track it and check it on day one and see how it compares to day three versus day five versus day seven. And even some Ethiopia naturals, day seven, which can be the best form of a coffee for other coffees, it could be day 21 or day 29 for some Ethiopia naturals, or I'm sure other coffees too, not just not just to Ethiopia naturals. Um, that smells good though. That smells, that smells really nice. I think it's going to be ready. <laughs> that smells sweet. Good. Yeah. 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 Um, we'll discuss the expectations of the taste notes in a minute here. I'm going to brew first, um, and I might as well just brew it right here, huh? So folks get a chance to see it. Try and take care of everything right on camera. Okay. So other than this Costa Rica, which I'm very excited for, we've got an Ethiopia Kedeb from the Banco Gotiti farm um, that we roasted last night, tried last night. It was pretty good, um, but I roasted it a little darker than I hoped. So we're gonna, oh, nice to see you. You're a nerd too, but you know it. Um, we are going to try another version of the Ethiopia Banco Gotiti that I roasted about one hour ago that's a little bit lighter, um, about a percent lighter. So that should show us a significant difference. Um, Let's get the water over here and we'll start uh, pre wetting the filter. Ooh. It smells sweet, like sour, maybe sour. Like maybe. Good, but good, like. <clears throat> In this case, it's if it's good. sour, it's probably because it's just so fresh. And that will probably calm down a little bit over time. Okay. Using same temp for lighter roast today. Um, if you're talking about the brew temp, I'm going to brew everything at 208 degrees. You can go up to boiling for, for lighter roasts, and sometimes it's recommended it's for really light roasts um, to help extract properly. Uh, for dark roasts, you definitely don't want to be doing that in uh, just, just to make sure you don't over-extract. But 
I'm going to try everything at 208. It's very possible that it could need a little bit more heat, um, but 208 seems to be a nice balance for me. Mexico was mad weird today, but I think I brewed it identically as I have this week. Oh, I'm boiling, boiling boy. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Um, not sure of what happened to the Mexico there, if it's been good. So interesting, interesting. Maybe a bloom thing, time thing, I don't know. All right, so we're burning 50 grams here to warm things up. Okay, I'm gonna put this back on the heat for a second. All right. Go take care of this. So again, this is the Costa Rica that you definitely shouldn't brew like an hour or two after you roast it, but I do. make another batch this afternoon and see we'll report thank you thank you would love to hear how it goes all right okay we've got 25 in here so we're going to bloom at 50 and give it a little agitation to start the bloom okay Going to 45 seconds, so I'm going to put this back on the heat for a second here. And while we wait for that, I'm going to get our cups real quick. So I'm just not even prepared today. It's blue. As it should. All right. Here we go, 43, 44, 45. Okay, gonna go for about 200 grams or so, pull it back, give it a little agitation, and then just keep going. Don't need a whole lot. Just some, enough to help make sure that extraction happens as evenly as possible. Don't let the bed drop too far. Now, if you're not familiar with brewing coffee like day of or day after roast, uh, things like aromatics, uh, and complexity can be really heavily perceived as muddy and unrefined. Uh, and that's totally normal because of all the carbon dioxide trapped in the coffee still. Um, you need that three to five to seven to 10 days sometimes, whatever it is, to help that flavor profile really explode and form and become what it should be. Like I said, I just like to brew day of or day after, track that so I know what to tell my customers uh, for later on when they ask me, you know, how long should I wait to brew this? Now, I won't necessarily be taking everything I roasted yesterday to the market tomorrow, but um, if it's excellent now, then it should be excellent tomorrow, right? However, if it's unrefined, if it's muddy, if it's complicated, um, then I'll hold off on it and bring it next week if it actually ends up being nice. So we've got our brew done here pretty much at 240. We'll let it Finish up, get the kettle back over here. Okay. Bed looks really nice. Turn this off for a second.
Okay. So we are on to tasting Costa Rica here. Now I've got my logbook, and I'm going to write down everything we talk about that's relevant to how I perceive this coffee now. And I might write in my notes what I hope for as it rests for the next few days, and maybe how I might change my roast profile uh, as it pertains to the flavor we're tasting here. So let's get our pour. All right. Smells pretty great. Wow, it's got this cocoa, almost graham crackery aroma in a sweet way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Smells very warming. Like, uh, that's a hard one to just describe, but yeah, we have dip toe. cocoa. Too close to my nose. <laughs> graham cracker. Now, this is a 1700 meter for Costa Rica. Um, that should mean a little bit of complexity by its nature with a higher altitude. It should mean a little sweetness. We're going to see, and it's a honey process. Uh, so that in combination with a high altitude should give us plenty of sweetness. Um, we'll, we'll see. Hmm. Right off the bat, it's pretty nice. Mm -hmm. um, slightly higher than average acidity, I would say. Between the honey process and the high altitude, I'm not surprised by that. It's also really hot, so maybe mm -hmm. my taste buds might not be knowing what's really going on there. But very first impressions, I like it. Let's see. Now, if you're also unfamiliar with like how to taste coffee across its range, um, especially if you brew it boiling, you need to let it rest, let it cool down a little bit, unless you've just spent your whole life destroying your taste buds. Um, your taste buds can receive different parts of the flavor profile differently as it cools down. Um, so you might generally find to be able to taste sweetness a little better uh, as the coffee cools. Same with acidity. Uh, with a super hot coffee, it can be hard, like I just tried to describe, to determine what the acidity is um, when it's just so hot. So you just let it cool down. <clears throat> and as it cools, it's definitely got the mark of an unrefined, complicated, muddy coffee. Right. This happens pretty often with something like a honey process or a natural day of or day after roast. A washed process tends to be closer to its peak in a shorter amount of time, and that can be one or two days after roast. For naturals, high altitudes, honey processes, things get a little more complicated, and it just needs more time to rest to develop its best profile. What this is tasting like to me is a coffee that I can't describe well enough to write anything on my bags yet that it would still match next week if I tried it next week. So I will not be bringing this Costa Rica to market tomorrow because I don't know what to write on the bag yet because I can identify that those flavors I'm tasting right now aren't exactly what it's going to taste like in a couple of days. That said, it's pretty good, right? Like... But we just know what that tastes like when it totally changed. Yeah, I mean, this I I don't know where it's going to go with the flavor profile yet. It's it's somewhere strangely in the middle of something a little more savory, something a little less sweet. But you can taste the the acidity in the complexity to know that it could go either way. Right. You want to read the notes? Yeah. Yeah. Let's read I'm, the notes. Now you were saying you were thinking somewhere like. Graham cracker -ish. Well, that was my that was my Your smell the aroma. Okay. Yeah. So these are I got these beans from Sweet Maria's. I'm almost I'm wondering if this is maybe like in the brown sugar kind of range. Oh, you said brown sugar, did you? Yeah. Because Sweet Maria's says from anywhere from city to full city plus sweetness to the finish, brown sugar. Oh. Sweet baked pastries, apple note that hints at okay. malic acidity. Okay. 
Bull City Roast give way to chocolate low tones. Yeah. Good for espresso. Okay. So what we have here is not a okay. high berry fruity coffee that we're trying to get. So so when you the brown sugar, I remember that from I can't remember that, what one that was, but this is very distinctly like in that range. And now it mentioned it, some sort of apple. Yes. Apple note that hints at malic acidity. So it, that would be that kind of It'll apple, be a little tart. Right, yeah. That yeah. like apple tartness, that little bit, you know, like apple juice, not the sweetness, but the uh the, the tartness. tartness. Yeah. Um yeah. <laughs> if you hear my son, he's just playing right behind the camera. Anyway, uh typically I buy my coffee from Coffee Bean Corral, but um I have to renew my uh my wholesale account with them. So I thought I'd try Sweet Maria's until then. And the options on Sweet Maria's is nice, a little different stuff to CBC. And the shipping wasn't so bad. So I pulled the trigger on 16 pounds of different things. And this is only a pound of this Costa Rica. So this is kind of just for me. I have one dag to bring to market. And I'll probably hold it until next week. However, now that we know that it's supposed to be brown sugary, it's supposed to be apple tartness, that's kind of present. Yeah. Like yeah. all of that I, is kind of present. I really get what they're going for there. It's because so it, it, when we talked about uh complexity and unrefined nature, what that really calls to is an expectation, right? So um if you're given no expectation of how a coffee should taste and you're really um like into specialty and you really want to know what the notes are supposed to be, if you've give, been given no information, it can be really hard to make the determination um with nothing to guide you. Unless you've been doing this for years and years, um, and some of you out there may have, and you might have a fine time picking out very specific notes with no guidance whatsoever. But expectation is a big deal for customers, too, who have no experience whatsoever. So, like I said before, I don't think I'm going to bring this to market tomorrow. I would like to try it again in a day or two. However, according to the expectations I've been given by Sweet Maria's, the apple note, um, the malic acidity, the tartness, the the brown, brown sugar. Sweet baked pastries is a little lost on me right now, and that might show up in a couple of days. Um, this was a 14.5% roast or 14.3, something like that. It's actually, I think, about where I'd want it. Yeah, I, I think it it hits what you're trying to accomplish. You know, it's, yeah, I think this will be ready in... Two days. Yeah. Like, I don't think I, I need like, too much time. Three days. Yeah, yeah. Something like yeah. that. I think it's not a seven-day, three-week, you know. No. But. All right. So let's get back to the logbook here. So we've got um, apple tartness is present. We've got almost like a dried brown apple. sugar. Maybe. Maybe. But apple juice in, on its own can kind of have that sensation. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just going to leave it right in there. You know, the stone fruit whole category, like pears, yeah. is kind of like that. Um, yeah, it's certainly not like a super juicy, fruity this co is, coffee. Drinking this, this was like immediately almost like a a fall coffee drink. Like fall coffee. Mm. Like between the brown sugar, the apple, you know, yeah. you get that whole mixture there. Um, so apple tart, brown sugar, uh, if you're just joining us, we're doing a comparative tasting between four or five different coffees that I roasted yesterday and today. This is a Costa Rica honey process, 1700 meters. So between honey process, between uh, somewhat high altitude, we have some uh, distinctions to make. And what we found is apple tart, brown sugar in this Costa Rica honey process, Los Santos region. So it's not a terrazzo. It's actually very nice. Um, mm -hmm. I'm happy with it and I will hold on to it for one week and sell the one bag that I have of it and maybe buy some more in the future. So apple tart, brown sugar. Um, I would say now that it's cooled down, let's reassess acidity here. So the tartness, if we can separate that from acidity, I would say it's much more like average than my previous assumption of mm -hmm. higher than average. And I think that I had to do a temperature. So I would say average acidity. It's not, when we talk about smooth coffee, it's not like other smooth coffees we've been tasting lately, right? Right. I think it's, that has to do with the tartness. Yes. It's that little bit of dry tart kind of thing that... Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so average acidity. Body. 
It's a little light. It's a little light in body. Yeah, it's uh, it's a light body. Yeah. Above T, but light, right. but uh, yeah, just yeah, light body. There's a little something there, and honestly, these are the types of coffees that I really love practicing osmotic flow with. If you if you don't know what osmotic flow is, this works really well with Kalita Wave. If you have small brews, uh, osmotic wave takes a little extra time, but instead Ooh. of pouring in concentric circles and managing that uh, the bed um, and agitating, instead you do no agitation. You pour in one straight line in the center, but slowly, so that you kind of um, after the bloom, everything is saturated. You pour very slowly in the center. And what that does is it increases the body of your coffee. And it doesn't necessarily make it any less sweet or more sweet. But the extra body yeah. with a coffee like this, where by its nature is sort of light on its own, if it's complemented by extra body, it can help just elevate the sensation of the coffee in general. Osmotic flow is really fun to practice. You can do it on anything, basically, any pour over, Chemex, V60. I just love to do it on, v on Kalita. Because if you do it on a Chemex, and if you're trying to get 40 grams out of it, it can take a long time. Osmotic flow can take eight, nine minutes on a Chemex. On a Kalita 15, 20 gram brew, you can get it done in four or five minutes. It's really nice. It's good practice. It's, it's especially good pour practice to keep a consistent, slow pour for like four or five minutes. That can be tough sometimes. Um, okay, let's do the wheel. Floral. Not really. No, no, no. 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 Not like the Ethiopia from last night. Right, yeah. I'll give it like a half. Um, basically nothing. Citrus. So citrus is interesting because apple's not super far from that. Right. But it's not citric, right? But I don't know if I'd say it's, as when we get there, citrus or berry. So it's neither. I think it's right. neither. Yeah, right. honestly. Um, it's own... But that's why I kind of want to give it a half. I feel like because, citrus is more appropriate. Because this wheel doesn't exactly have, like, stone fruit on it. Right. This is outside. Yeah. Or, yeah it's just a not little outside the of the range. Right. I'll give it a half just because <clears throat> I know that. Um, spicy? No. No. Uh, earthy? Nah, no. Really, no. 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 Cocoa. Cocoa is up there. But it's, like we said, more like brown sugar. Brown, yeah. um, so I'm going to give it like a two or so yeah keeping that in mind halfway up or so not nutty uh not smoky not berry because we can right. decide this, this wheel yeah just yeah no no berry really so this wheel is really one-sided to cocoa keeping in mind that there is an apple tartness there that doesn't exactly fit with citrus doesn't fit with berry or floral it just is what it is so you have to write that down and make, make these notes separate to the wheel. If you use a wheel, if you don't use a wheel, that's fine. Um, it, I think the wheel is a nice visual guide, and it also helps me separate kind of the flavors that I'm trying to detect. All right. So to save some time, I'm not going to fill it in. I'm just going to line it out, and there's my wheel. I know you can't see that, but all right. We're going to go to the next one. Stick around. Take a break. Grab some coffee yourself. We'll be right back. Okay. So what do you want to move to? We did, uh, going forward, we'll be tasting everything we did taste last night. So we can do Rwanda, Timor, Ethiopia, Gadeb, or what was the other one? Did we have another one? No, we didn't. We said three. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so we can do three more. Oh, uh, we can do either the higher Ethiopia or the new lower Ethiopia, or both. Let's try the new Ethiopia. That was... Okay, so we, so we can see if some of that other fruit flavor comes yeah. through. Yeah, we'll see, see what we get. All right. I need my catch cool. You need my scale. <clears throat> All right, guys. So we are going to do an Ethiopia next. And it's actually over here. Oh, it's okay. All right. 
hang in there for just a minute while I get this next brew going. And we've got Costa Rica done. That is. Yeah, that, that brown sugar was. It's a very distinct flavor, I feel like. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the part of the expectation thing, right? It's not. Uh, if you didn't know, it was hard to really pick up on. The only, yeah, the only reason why is because, again, I believe it was a Starbucks. You remember the name? <clears throat> the Miranda blend? Uh, it was like a mixed berry, brown sugar. Uh, I think that was the only one we did, right? Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, it was a whole bean. Yeah. And, yeah, it had that same, the, the brown sugar flavor is just very distinct. You know, it's, right. It's not often that we have that, I guess, much. Yeah, that one's a little bit different, for sure. But... Even though it had that, uh, with this one, with that apple flavor, that very, uh, it complemented the flavor profile. It's almost a, like, cider-like coffee. Uh, it, yeah. It's kind of, you know, stretching a little bit, but I mean, no, like, in that... stretching it, because like, we've got that apple tartness. Yeah, yeah. Get it. It's a nice little combination of flavors. Whoops. Okay. Get the next batch going. So here is our grounds. <clears throat> definitely smells different. Again, we're grinding on the Gen 1 Ode uh, at 5 stock burrs. For V60, we're going to do a 25 gram brew, uh, 208 degrees, 1 to 16 ratio. This is how I standardize basically everything across the board. Doesn't mean I don't experiment when I'm not doing comparative tasting, uh, but this is kind of like just the standardization for this process. It smells nice. This is uh, a slightly lighter roast. I did this one last night, and we tasted all these. Um, and this one is 1% lighter. That is to say that <clears throat> last night's roast, I roasted 16.6% um, of the weight off from the beans, which made it kind of a, a heavier medium. I wouldn't quite say mid-dark. This one is slightly lighter. 15.5%, uh, so just over a whole percent off the weight um, difference, so just a little less weight off, and I notice um, a particular sweetness. Uh, a little less smoky, yeah. just because it's lighter, which, I mean, that this is an Ethiopia washed, by the way, if I said natural, I was mistaken, this is a washed Ethiopia, so I don't have a ton of experience with washed Ethiopias, because Ethiopia is tends to output a lot of naturals. So this is a little bit of a learning curve for me. Um, <clears throat> this one in particular, I also might not take to market tomorrow. I will probably take the 16 because it's darker. Yeah, that one's got a consistent profile. Yeah. This will be see. interesting. Yeah. yeah, I'm excited for that. Hang on just a second while my water boils. filter again. Got about 45 to burn on this one. Uh, 
Okay. Here we go. Get our bloom going. Looking for 50 grams to bloom with. Double the weight of the input of coffee. That's good. 51 to is fine. A little shake, a little agitation to help the bloom start. Put the heat back on for a second here. <clears throat> Come on, we, we, I'll write some information down. So we got Ethiopia, Gadeb, Banco, Gotiti. Today is the 10th. And this was the, what did I say, the 15.5? Roast? Yes. Yeah, 15.5. Yeah, 16.6%. Yep. Okay. And we've got V60, and we're at 50 seconds here. All right. Now, again, I roasted this one only about an hour and a half ago now. Um, so it can be really tough to make profile distinctions on a coffee that's just been roasted. But like I said, I like to do it. I like to track it. Some of these coffees can change so, so dramatically over the course of a week or two or three weeks. A little agitation, a little after 200 grams. Ooh. Can you, can you smell that? Like it's, or I can smell it from here. Oh, there's definitely when a you, sweetness. When you... Wow. <laughs> Definitely a sweetness that wasn't present in last yeah, night's roast. This, this could be the right percentage that really makes it shine. Okay. I noticed that in the, the grounds that it was a little bit more fruity, you know. Yeah, I noticed that too. That's I wasn't yeah. Wasn't sure that was gonna come out dominantly in the brew, but we'll see. Might be pleasantly surprised here. Okay. Okay, thanks for joining us. This is kind of a chill session here. You can put on some music. You can pop in and out, whatever, ask some questions. Just doing comparative tasting. We've got two, three, maybe four. I think three more coffees to do after this one. So we're going to be here a little while. Now going back to the last one, yeah, the Starbucks version. You know, there was that was a different coffee, but you know, going with that brown sugar, they really it, it was burnt. That's just the, <laughs> that's just the their kind of signature. Now I haven't tried. There was a couple Starbucks coffees I noticed in the Chicago airport that were like super nice looking, like single origin Guatemalas and a couple others that I didn't didn't have the time or whatever to pick up at the time, but. Um, I'm sure they they can do some right right some correct this one with the brown sugar it just it was <laughs> it was good though like it wasn't but you're right there was no harsh like their to it. light roast veranda blend yeah. tasted a little over roasted There's just I don't yeah they they always have that harshness of I don't know okay Let's take this out. swirl now again it's going to be hot you need to give it some time to assess but yeah last time when we first took our first drink it was it needed to cool yeah. to really have the flavor come hang on hold on bud when you get back smell this yeah i i can't believe it it's actually yep, 
There you go. I think this is going to be it. Yeah? Smells good? I'll let you smell it first, but I, uh, one of the fruits is coming through. Okay. It might be still hot, but yeah. Do you smell the right? Oh, Do you smell the fruit? Yeah, that's very pretty. Tangerine? Now, <laughs> this Ethiopia Gadeb, Banco Gotiti, Sweet Maria is put on the bag, among many other things. Pink bubblegum and nectarine. Oh, nectarine. Okay. Nectarine. Yes. Um, those were the two that were on the bag that I was like, wow, this is it's what made me buy the coffee. I wanted to see how close you know, I could get that. I smell more There is citrus. something sugary sweet about the yeah, scent. Right. That is okay, yeah, yeah. It's not just a, a citrus. There's like a it's a sugary yeah, citrus. Like a bit like more like berry sweet in the scent and the aroma. Well that's infinitely better than last night. The other one was good too, if you would like a little bit darker yeah uh but to really i think capture what the coffee is meant to taste like with the fruits and like this is this is good this is i think honestly this is way further down the correct path and i think it can go lighter um we'll continue to assess as it cools down we may pick up a little more uh on the flavor profile I think I can understand the nectarine perspective. Yeah. Okay. Be right back. Now, how are you uh, feeling about body and acidity right now? It's a little... Let's see. Hold on. More body than the, the last one in the Costa Rica. A little syrupy. I agree. It's I kind agree. of, but it's not like... It's kind of an in-between a light and an average medium body. But it has that extra, a little bit of syrupiness that bumps it up. I totally which is agree. nice. I like that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's I like nice. it too. I have been finding my preference leans towards a heavy, syrupy body yeah, coffee. Yeah. A little more substance, which is interesting because I find myself avoiding the French press basically at all costs because of the texture. However, I think if, you know, there's the Hoffman method of the French press, the ultimate French press technique of using spoons and getting rid of the crust and all that to alleviate the texture issues I have with French press, but leave the body support that is created by a French press in something like this. It's wonderful. I love that thicker bodied coffee. Especially if you're just having it black, it, yeah. it just adds more to it. Yeah. Um, so I totally understand the kind of nectarine citrus side of the flavor profile. There is a sugary sweetness in there. Yeah. Like I like I got in the aroma, I can't define it as pink bubblegum. I that, just can't. That, yeah, that's I can't. At, um, at this stage, it's that's too much. And maybe it's just not there yet. Who knows? And maybe it needs to be lighter. It, it could need to be yeah. lighter. We've got okay. I'll read the bag off to you guys. Uh, city to city plus is what they recommend. Uh, this is a good deb. Rose and jasmine. Flower aromatics. Now, I totally, I, I get it. It had this sweetness in the aroma. Sure, it could be rose jasmine. Fine. Refined sweetness, pristine acidity. Um, however, they define it pristine. So maybe, um, I don't know, very clean. Yeah, I mean, it is a higher acidity, a little brighter. It could be brighter. Um, aromatic flavors of honey, pink bubblegum, nectarine, sweet citrus, perfect for pour over brew. I agree with that. Perfect for pour over brew. It's very nice. Yeah. Um, I would blend it. Actually, honestly, I would blend it with the Costa Rica. I would blend it with some of the things we had last night uh, for espresso. Um, and I would probably put this in my espresso machine. No problem. This has a range that I enjoy. The sweetness, the citrus, um, 
It has some, the, the floral notes, the rose. What did it say? Rose. Rose and jasmine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's got this range bit, that I yeah. like a little yeah. more. Last night was very one sided. Yep. Yeah. It had none of the sweetness. Yeah, this touches on kind of different areas. And they're not all, not overpowering. It's just you get to enjoy them all. So, yeah. That's a, so, all right. So we've got a thicker body. Uh, acidity, I will say, is bright. Yep. Um, the aroma was sweet. <clears throat> this was a washed coffee. And altitude was 2,200 meters. This is 2,200 meters. That's a pretty, that's pretty high altitude. That's about as high as it gets. Explains the sweetness. Um, and honestly, I would love to compare this with a natural of this on, from the same farm, from the same altitude. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it would be pretty wild. The fact that we can get this kind of nectarine sweetness out of a washed uh, from this high altitude coffee is pretty awesome. Nonetheless, let's go over the wheel. So floral. We've got this rose yeah, jasmine thing going on. Yeah. I think that supports that. I will probably give it like a one and a half or something. Yeah, that's not a super floral coffee, but it's there. It's present. Uh, citrus, um, pretty high. I'm not going to say it's like Mexico where it's like super orange or Uganda where it's super orange, but the nectarine component is there, like a two. Two, two. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Spicy, no. Earthy, not at all. Cocoa, slight. I will say slight. No, maybe not. Maybe a half. Just maybe with, a half. A lot. Of, yeah. I mean, if it's there, it's so subtle. Yeah. Cocoa, nutty, no. Smoky, not at all. Berry. Now this is where we have to make a distinction here. There is this brighter sugary sweetness that I don't think is completely isolated to the nectarine. And it's, it's different than the brown sugar. It's definitely different than the brown sugar. Um, is it more sweetness in the floral aspect, or is it a berry sweetness? Mm. I can't really attribute that to a berry profile. Right. As I taste it. You know what I mean? Like the, the the rose jasmine thing is like stuck in my mind right now for where that sweetness it, comes it from. Almost is, maybe it's like a floral sweetness. Yeah. Like, yeah. But I think that's, I think the citrus is a little bit more, but the other component, yeah. it's a floral citrus coffee. And that's really all it is. And one thing I like is sometimes floral coffees, they can be, leave that drying aftertaste. And yeah. this doesn't, do that to me. Yeah. No, it's not it, bad. It's refreshing. A little bit. Not quite like a Saidamo. No, no, right. But, it, but, but it's up there. Before being pretty floral, it's refreshing. Yeah. So this wheel is floral, citrus, and it's not extreme in any way. It's actually fairly sophisticated. Um, for it only being an hour and a half since I roasted it, it's got distinctions that I enjoy. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would not have an issue bringing that to market tomorrow. I, However, I will hold it a week because it might change. Yeah. And, and I, I don't think it'll change in a way that it won't be nectarine and it won't be sweet like we just said, but it might elevate more. Right. It might be right. more extreme than I can taste It now. could go off in one way. Maybe it'll be more floral it, it or maybe could. the citrus will pop through more. I have yes. a feeling that the nectarine aspect will be more elevated next week. Uh, I would love to see like a whatever they say for pink bubblegum, that kind of sweetness. Whatever, however they got that sweetness, I want to experience that. Maybe that's a lighter rose. I don't Could know be. yet. Yeah. However, for this one, floral, citrus, we've got rose, jasmine, nectarine. It's on. It hits. It's good. It's a very good coffee. Um, so I will write that in the notes here. Lighter for something sweeter. Hey, bud. And nectarine and uh, rose slash jasmine. And that's it for that one. Okay. Come here, buddy. Wow. So okay, I'll Oh, you got water right there. You want to juice? All right, what else?
why don't you give it another taste now that it's cooled down and see if you can describe for me anything we haven't already talked about. Now this, I feel like it's losing, well, maybe the floral's coming through kind of more, or... Could be. The citrus is there, but it, it's not a... Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I, what was it again? Nectarine? Nectarine. Yeah, so it's... It's, uh, it's cooled down some, so it's lost maybe a little... Maybe the complexity. Zip. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Maybe the acidity might be perceived as lower. Ooh, what was that? Exactly. Let's see. I had a little taste of something that kind of... I think I know what you mean. I almost want... I wanted to kind of say pink bubble gum. I don't know why. <laughs> Not like as I think in like I understand sweetness, what you mean. but it was like, again, it's like taking a piece of pink bubble gum, there's, setting it on your tongue, yeah. and just that initial. There's something kind of tart in the back of my tongue, but it's that agrees with that. It, it's not. It's not super strong, but right. it's, it's part of. I want to say the floral part. It's just yeah, a sweet, the sweet floral presence that I can agree with some kind of pink bubblegum sensation, but it's so subtle that I wouldn't say that. Yeah, that's... It's interesting nonetheless. All right, we're going to move on to Rwanda. This Rwanda, for you roasters out there, I don't know what it was about it that was so extremely chaffy. Um, I mean, it was just so, so much. Uh, the most chaff-filled coffee I've ever roasted. Now, let's take a look at our notes from last night. This is the same one we drank last night. Gateri region of Rwanda. It's a bourbon variety, or bourbon, however you say that. The roast level here, 14.9% weight loss, 1,800 meter altitude. What we said in the aroma was cinnamon, sweet, spiced, like cardamom, and that was present in just the aroma while I was brewing, um, which was amazing, uh, very cool. The acidity, we said, was smoother than average, and the body was lighter than average. This is one of those where osmotic flow also would probably be really great. Now, last night, we brewed these on Kalita Wave. We were getting, I was brewing um, not my standard, so I was trying to pull a little sweetness where there might not have been. I was trying to trying to work with a little less coffee, too, so I could have more for today. So we're doing these on V60 today, 1 to 16, 25 gram brews, um, 208 degrees, just on the V60, a 5 instead of a 4 on the old stock Gen 1 burrs. Um, yeah, let's get to it. Now, do you remember tasting this? Because I'm actually having trouble remembering the taste. We said cocoa. We said cocoa was present, and it had a chai tea type of leaning taste. Right, some um, sort of. But the cocoa, I remember spice. being heavy. Yeah. Find out. <laughs> it was um, a long. The, there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We went for a while last night. The chai tea aspect of it was the most interesting part to me. 
Because actually, that's what Sweet Maria said. Um, integrated, oh, oh, sweetness <clears throat> integrated into the acidity, hints of chai spice. So we picked up on that. Um, bittersweet cocoa. There's not a whole lot else to it. So cocoa, chai, cinnamon, cardamom, and the aroma. Um, and it's not much more complex than that as it is at a 14.9%. I would be a little hesitant to roast lighter. I'm not sure that that would benefit this coffee, given I remember it being pretty nice as a mm -hmm. cocoa kind of leaning profile. But you never know. you got to experiment sometimes. i got to get some new Hario filters. Okay. Now I know some of you have been waiting a long time for me to do a roasting stream, um, and I will do that. I promise, especially because I want to take care of that before summer hits. Um, but I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm still learning. I'm I'm trying to do a combination of learn by others' profiles on the bullet and learn by manually roasting. And honestly, I've had so much more luck with profile tasting, getting what I expected, just manually roasting myself. A lot of these profiles are playing it a little too safe, um, and I'm not sure what's going on. Maybe it's not matching exactly what beans are being used. Some of these profiles don't give me a whole lot of descriptors. Um, so I might be using a Mexico honey process that I found on Roast World where I get my profiles for the, for the bullet, but it could be a different farm. It could be, it's, it's kind of difficult to find exactly the right bean to download the same profile from. So I'm having some issues with that. Um, and as the roast world community grows, hopefully more people will put their profiles up with good information to share um, so that we can all benefit. But I've been just having much better luck manually roasting. And that's what I did this morning. I manually roasted the Costa Rica and the lighter, Ethiopia. And that really was needed because I used a profile last night for the Ethiopia and just let it go. And it was supposed to be lighter than it was. And it was not. Yeah. So this morning I <clears throat> manually roasted it and it came out pretty much where I wanted it to. So I promise I will do a roast stream um, and talk through that when I'm a little more comfortable with actually uh, my profiling process. And if you guys do this, I recommend you have food ready. Uh, eat directly before or directly after because we do this. No, eat, eat, eat before, eat before or and after. Because <laughs> when you do these coffees, you tend to drink more than you really should. Uh, and you really are feeling it by the end of like a fourth or fifth cup. <clears throat> All right. Watch yourself here. Again, we've got 50, uh, 50 gram bloom for 25 grams of coffee input. And it's all I had left of this Rwanda for us to do this with. Okay. So we're moving on to day two for Rwanda. Gatere. Ten. Day two. We got another ten seconds here. V sixty. Two o eight. One to sixteen. We're at forty five seconds. <clears throat> and for a twenty five gram brew, I tried to. Uh, Pour up to about two, somewhere between 200 and 250 grams, maybe 225. Stop, give it some agitation, which I usually agitate at the bloom level, and I totally forgot. 
that's okay. Shouldn't affect it too much. We're going to stop there at the 200 mark. Give it a little agitation. Some people use a spoon. I think just swirling the V60 yeah. is totally fine. And we'll keep that bed up. Concentric circles, go to the center, go back out. Stopping a little after 300, giving a little bit more agitation. Not a lot. You don't need much at all. Just enough <clears throat> to make sure the party's still happening. Finish up the pour. There you go, and we're at a uh, little 210 right now, so by 230, maybe a little after 230, we should be finished up. Okay. Hmm. All right, so this was, um, what was the roast profile on this? Hold on a second. 14.9% weight loss on last night's Rwanda roast. So this is day two. We're trying this for the second time here. So this is where we can compare our notes from last night to tonight, to today. 14.9% uh, weight loss. I would <clears throat> confidently put medium on this bag, um, but it's putting the taste notes. That's what we're really doing today. I didn't put taste notes on any of these bags because I need to determine those flavor profiles. So we're at about three minutes. I'll call that done. Okay. interesting um it's reminds me of a kenya a little bit in the aroma you remember last yeah. night though it was different maybe too hot still well i don't know if temperature has a whole lot to do with or the yeah sure. smelling it it reminds me slightly of a, of a savory kenya in the aroma why that's so different from last night i'm not sure I picked up on cinnamon and cardamom I, I last night. I kind of get a little cinnamon, but it's it's not as sweet. Yeah, in the smell, it's, it's not it's as like sweet a, as last night. It's dampened. It's a wet cinnamon. <laughs> <laughs> it might come through more. Right? Yeah. It's kind of... My fingers wrapped up. Okay, bud, hang on. I don't know what you're doing? Be right back. All right, let's give it a taste. Mm. This one's tough. This one it changed. is tough. You changed, right? It seems different. Yeah. It seems lighter for some reason lighter um it almost seems like i brewed it at a weaker ratio yeah i can taste it's much more subtle the cinnamon it's like yeah but that just might be those day one roast tastings are they're tricky because be, everything can change everything can it's, change yeah and so you think you have, this is what it is, but then give it a day, two, three, five, you know, and it's like, oh, well, this is what it turns into. Um, so for aroma, what did we say? A little more like Kenya-like? Um, okay. 
it's almost, uh, you know what, as it cools down, I'm getting some more of that, like, chai yeah, sort yeah. of tea tasting. It, it, it's almost like it took from yesterday, and it's blended them all together in just to a more, a little Not, more uniform taste. Yes, yeah. 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 It's, Which is kind of interesting because you actually hope for the opposite a little bit, where the individual tastes come out. Just more distinctly, right? Not necessarily blend together. They, I'm not. I'm, it's not this super one, surprising, right? This for I, this coffee, I still get the cinnamon, the chai. It's kind of there. It's just the rest of it kind of blended. So I, right where we said cocoa was present last night, it's harder to pick up on a, a distinct cocoa ness because these these profiles kind of mix together. Yeah, um, it's not a bad coffee. No, no. However, I. I if, I don't think I would reach for it. It's not my preference. Right. It's so far. It's the least exciting. Coming off the back of the <laughs> the nectarine sweetness that we just had. Yeah. I'll agree. It's However, still very good. But, because I mean, Sweet Maria's noted chai, and so did I last night. Um, and again this morning, we've got this tea-like spiced nature, a spiced tea profile that's present. Um, and I, I can I can still say it's got this chai like nature to it. Um, a little cocoa. It's not gone, but it's blended. It's a little more camouflaged, yeah. I'll say. Um, interesting just, development. Yeah, All right. But almost just want more spice. Um, yeah. So although as you drink it, do you get kind of like a little bit of a after spice kind of lingering thing, or is that just kind of a... yeah? It's a little long in the little. finish. Um, yeah, I would say so. Yeah, yeah. Those spices that we had though yesterday are just they're muted. Yeah, a little bit, and that's I was hoping those would stay because that really was like they made it. Very interesting. Um, okay, we'll keep that in mind. Uh, this is day two, so who knows what this will be like day five. I'll, I may hold on to this one as well. Um, so I may have to do some, some more roasting today to bring enough for tomorrow for market. This one might need just a little more time yeah. to be, for me to write something on the bag and be confident about it. Because honest, because you can probably tell I'm not super confident about what I'm tasting here. But we do have cocoa, spice, chai type of thing going on. I'm confident about that. Oh, yeah. It's not going to change from that. Kind of like the Ethiopia. It's not going to get different tasting, uh, different flavors. It's just how do these current present tastes enhance? Or like we said, some of them get muted after time. How does, that play, how does time play into those flavors, whether or not they rise or fall? Um, I could I could probably write spice chai cocoa on the bag, and it'll probably be correct by next week. But I don't want to don't want to risk it yet. Is all I need. Okay, um, you know, let's do oh, one thing. I'm thinking is some of the Rwandas we've had have been more tea like tea like, yeah. And so maybe that plays into the weaker. <clears throat> flavor that we're kind of you know it, it it's not bad i'm i like this one because it has more body than a tea like yeah coffee. and i'll um reiterate if i didn't say it before or i guess that would be iterate if i didn't say it before this is a honey process for Rwanda. okay all rwandas i've had in the past have been washed um that that definitely can have a play a part in kind of the range of um flavors so a washed can be more tea like for certain coffees um and the fact that this is not so might be because it's a honey process the spiced chai nature of what we're tasting here probably comes from it being a honey process uh the altitude on this one is 1800 meters so also fairly high um not super surprising that it's not just completely cocoa heavy and nothing else so complexity often comes with higher altitude and honey process helps that along too. 
Let's go over acidity and body real quick. It's pretty smooth. Oh yeah. Like, yeah. For I was just gonna I was thinking if you wanted to have coffee, but you're not into coffee. <laughs> it's yeah. it's kind of a bridge between tea and coffee. Yeah. So for us, you know, we're looking for those, you know, exciting flavor explosions. And so sometimes we're like yeah. A little disappointed, but it's still good. Like it's not right. It's just not us. Yeah. Let's do the um, the wheel here, and we'll move on to the next one. So floral, not really at all. Um, or well, let's taste it again. I mean, is that I think it'll, does that kind of go with the spice kind of thing? You Maybe know, it does. Maybe you're right because I can't really, well, there's a spicy category. Yeah. And so I'd put that in there. Maybe just like a one for the floor. Maybe, well, it's kind of a mix Half. between the two, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a spiced yeah. floral nature. Yeah. Um, so we'll give it, I'll give it a one, another half. It's uh, it's there, I can agree with that. Citrus, no, no, no. Spicy, um, I'm gonna give that a one as well. Yeah. Earthy, no. Cocoa is up there. I'm gonna give it like a two, maybe a two and a half. Yeah. Because otherwise, there's nothing else going on. Hey, buddy. Nutty, no? Nope. Smoky, no. No. Berry, no. No. So what we have here is a floral, spiced cocoa coffee. The wheel helps us identify that more confidently. If you don't, oops, if you don't have one of these coffee logbooks, I really recommend it. It, like I said, helps you identify characteristics of your coffee and visualize what's going on too. It can help you talk about it as well. Sometimes it's all about just finding the right words. Okay, we're gonna move on. Um, feel If you feel like giving it another taste, talking about maybe anything we missed while I get things going for the next one. Yeah, it's a, a little plainer than some coffees, but it still is uh, still good. So the next coffee we're getting ready to taste here is from Timor. What did we say that's an Indonesian island? Yeah, it's in the uh, like southeast part. I think it's part of Indonesia. It's not a coffee you'll find very often, um, but when it does pop up, I like to try and browse what is available from the area. This is the first one that kind of sparked my interest and it's actually pretty good. We tried it last night, probably, um, of the ones we had last night was my favorite. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Although the Costa Rica is now kind of growing up. Or no, the, the, or wait. The other hold Ethiopia, on, hold on. I gotta... the lighter Ethiopia. Yes, the, yeah, the that Gadab, one. that one's growing on that, now. I will agree. I will totally agree. Nice. And actually, you know what? The Costa Rica, surprisingly, I I liked it. Yeah. Give that a whiff. Now, how many Rwandas have we tried? Just the previous one? Just the one. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting how the same country of coffee, it, I, I don't know how close they were, the farms, but there's, yeah, different there's region. some similarities. I'm sure it's a different the... altitude. Yeah. I Like I've said before, Kenyans 
are distinctly Kenyan. Right. Like you can just tell. For me, I have a preference that tends to my my palate just doesn't enjoy Kenyan coffee for whatever it is. I find it savory and ultra citrusy to the point where it's just not very enjoyable for me. I just don't like it for whatever reason. Um, so Kenyans are distinctly Kenyan. There's so many. I've tried multiple now, and they're all so similar. Um, so Rwanda, kind of the same thing. I'm finding it to be similar from one to they the other. They tend to be in that tea-like profile of... Not super sweet. Right. Something a little spiced. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing with the other Rwanda. But again, processing plays a role. Um, I don't know if I've tried a natural process Kenya yet or a honey process Kenya. I think I tried all washed Kenyas. So processing plays a role. Altitude plays a role. Um, yeah. That's why I'm really enjoying... Ethiopia is obviously, they're all over the board with sweetness, um, but the same with Costa Rica. I've so, Costa Rica yeah, that's, is exploding with options, Yeah. so if you're looking for new and different, uh, Costa Rica's coffee I industry right now is just on top of it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I gotta get my, my stuff together here. Let's do this. So this is the final coffee we're gonna do. If you're uh, just joining us, this is uh, comparative tasting. We've done four, I think, four coffees now, and we are going to taste our final one here, which is from Timor. <clears throat> okay, burning 40, 40 grams here. Pre wet the filter. V60. 1 to 16 ratio, 208 degrees. Grinding at a 5 on the stock Gen 1 burrs for the Ode, fellow Ode grinder. Okay. Smells pretty good. <clears throat> 50 gram bloom. Let's remember to agitate when the bloom is done. And watching while editing. Good times. Gotta get. All right. Thanks for stopping in, hanging out. Till the next one. Okay, agitate oh. and bloom. Very bloomy. Put this back on the heat for a second. Okay. Now, this Timor, I remember being pretty pleasant last night. I said it was my favorite of those we tried last night. Um, so that's excluding the nice light roast Ethiopia, lighter roast Ethiopia Gedeb that we tried today. Um, but this one I remember being chocolate heavy. Yes. Like very chocolatey. <clears throat> yep. Didn't I say something like this would make a great cold brew because it was so chocolatey? Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully that holds up. I really liked that. A little agitation at 200, 200 grams. We'll continue, keep the bed up. I'm hoping this one lives up to what we had yesterday. Yeah, me too. 300 grams, another little bit of agitation. Don't need a whole lot there. Keep the bed up and finish the pour. And that is our final pour. We're going to get to tasting this here in just a minute.
<clears throat> Let's take a look at our notes from Timor last night. All right, Timor, day one. This is the Leste region of Timor, I suppose. Uh, honey process, again, I've been very interested in these various honey processes that are popping up out of farms these days. 16.3%. This was kind of an issue for me when I very first roasted this and saw 16.3. I thought, oh man, I'm missing out on some of the sweetness. Not really the case. In a chocolatey way, we still get plenty of sweetness. Um, <clears throat> we got an average acidity, as I wrote last night. Again, we brewed this on the Kalita last night. The Kalita wave, um, we did a... I believe we did a 20 gram brew on the Kalita last night. But still a 1 to 16, still 208 degrees, so it should be fairly similar. Maybe just a little less sweet. Whether that's good or bad, I don't know. We'll, we'll find out. You're silly, William. All right, 210. Day 2. Some more. Less day. Honey process. Uh, V60. 116, 208. Take care of this. All right. Let's try it. Okay, if you're just popping in here, we are doing a comparative tasting and this is our last one. Um, feel free to pop any questions you have in the comments. We're just tasting coffee here. I just brewed a bunch of them up. Um, so let's smell this guy. This is a Timor honey processed coffee. It smells, I think, if I remember correctly, about the same uh, mm -hmm. sweetness in the aroma. I'm not going to taste it yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be right back. Sometimes I got to stop the stream and go be a dad. Okay. Back to the coffee. Oh, wow. It's still my favorite. Wow. The chocolate is so heavy in such a good way. What do you think? What you is, it, is it less bitter chocolate? It's a different... I'm trying to figure out what. Yeah, I would not categorize it as a like a dark chocolate or like a bittersweet chocolate. And maybe last night we did. Did we call it like a dark chocolate last night? Or that it was. It seemed like maybe it was a little darker. This seemed like it's lightened up. What did we say? Uh, cocoa is heavy, um, not bad as is. Light roast for fruits. If we were going to attempt to try and get any fruitiness out of this, uh, I would need to roast lighter. However. It's like a medium dark or uh, darkness of cocoa, like yeah, like it's not too bitter, it's not too right, sweet. Right, it's just right. like it's somewhere between a dark chocolate and a milk chocolate, and it, it, it's not super bittersweet. What I'm still finding it, it has that. I would call it like a. What did we say last night? A hot was, cocoa, right? Or it's almost like it has this like mouth feel of cocoa powder, like yeah. Still, I, it still has that. Yeah. I'm glad it has Being that. On the I, I like that. I was, well, we oh. were concerned about the Kalita brew maybe uh, introducing a little bit of extra fines or something. Not the case. It's still got that kind of powdered cocoa. And it's an it's not it's not in the beginning or the middle. It's kind of just before it gets to the end. It just kind of all of a sudden you get this like almost cooling cocoa effect. Hmm. You kind of get like it's interesting. It is interesting. Um, 
I'm going to look at our wheel last night for this Ooh, one. Right there, yeah. <laughs> so a... what sticks out is a slight smokiness, mm -hmm. slight spiciness, mm -hmm. and cocoa almost all the way up, a half from being all the way. Otherwise, it's, everything it's, else is tame. It's cocoa up front, cocoa in the middle, and then in the back, it's cocoa. <laughs> <laughs> um, in I think in the best way. You can say most coffees have this cocoa taste if you roast them a little darker. Uh, you can get away with that, which is not best practice at all. But in this case, cocoa is so present, you can't get away from it. The Sweet Maria's, um, I'm not going to get that bag out, but I distinctly remember them saying hot cocoa. Yeah. So, yeah. Let's do this wheel. Uh, how do we feel about acidity and body? I will, I will say it's relatively smooth. Mm-hmm. Even for it being in this cocoa space, it's a pretty smooth coffee. Yeah, yeah. Um, lighter acidity and body, I would say average. It's yeah, not, it's, it's not average. Syrupy, right, right. It's average. Yeah, it's average. And, um, okay, so floral, no. No floral. No. Not at all. Citrus, no. no. Spicy. Is that a thing that we tasted last night? I would say no, because whatever that isn't cocoa is more like smoky than spicy. Do you agree? Yeah, yeah it's... Yeah. Okay. I'm going to put no on Yeah, spicy. it's not spicy. It's this. It's just a light smokiness in, in the chocolate profile. Yeah. 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 Uh, not earthy. Cocoa, I'm still going to leave it where it was last night. It is... A half from the top. Yeah. I mean... Not nutty. I'm going to give uh, smokiness uh, like a, a half. Yeah. And that's all there is to it. Just that little hint of smokiness. So what we have here is really interesting. And I wish I could show you this very clearly on the camera, but I can't really. But I will tell you. Kind of like a, a diamond almost. Well, yeah, yeah. But the, the tracking, this is why I love to track these coffees like this. Because we have a, we have a oh. coffee that went from a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and mostly this. To now we have one that's. Much less a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and much more what we could predominantly taste in the first place. So we have a, a profile that's been elevated beyond what we tasted the last time. It didn't change to different things. Um, some coffees can. This one did not. What has happened is that the flavors we tasted, some of them went a little higher. Some of them are more noticeable, and some of them are less noticeable. Not that there's a different profile altogether. And that's what we like to see when we're talking about tracking the development of a coffee after you've roasted it. From day one to day whatever it is that it needs, you need to track that stuff. And that's it. That's all we have today. I want to thank you guys if you're here with me now. Uh, thanks for stopping in. Thanks for asking some questions. Um, and in the future, if you're watching the VOD later on, uh, feel free to drop some extra questions in or find me on Instagram or Facebook or wherever. Just search up David Sargent Coffee. You should be able to find me um, or davidsargentcoffee.com. And I'll, I have some blogs up there for information. Otherwise, you can just chat at me. I would love to have a conversation with you guys about coffee, roasting on the Alio Bullet, and just whatever else I've got going on. Thanks for stopping in, guys. We'll see you in the next one.